A lot of times people use the term heat um, raw. What I mean by that is, if it is hot outside, does not mean you have a lot of heat. Wait, what? What? If it's really hot outside, that does not mean heat is happening. What is the definition of heat? Now, if it's just hot outside, uh, is it flowing? Is it flowing from hot to cold? No. However, if it's hot outside and I open my door in my house, is heat flowing now? Probably. So just because something is hot does not mean it has heat. A, a more accurate way of saying it would be if something is hot, it has a lot of thermal energy. If thermal energy gets transferred, that process is called what do you think? Heat. Okay? Listen. Okay? Just because something's hot does not mean heat is transferring. It just means it has a lot of thermal energy. However, if thermal energy transfers from something that is hot to something that is cold, that process has a name. And it's called what? <laughs> the flow of thermal energy. If thermal energy is flowing, you have heat. If thermal energy is not flowing, you don't have heat. So if you're just talking about a hot room, is thermal energy flowing from hot to cold if the room is just hot? No. 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 So it doesn't have heat. It's got a lot of thermal energy, but the only way for heat to be going on is if that thermal energy is flowing from hot to cold. Make sense? Okay, now, I'm wondering if you guys can figure out then how will you know heat is flowing <laughs> or thermal energy is flowing in the form of heat? What would be a really good indicator that thermal energy is being transferred? Yes! Yes! I'm sorry, I didn't think anybody would get that answer. Oh, yes. <laughs> Thank you very much. Wow, did you right hear what he just said? Oh, wow. Sorry, I didn't mean to hit your hand now. Or, no. What did you say? He's laughing? Yeah. Okay, so what he said was, you know that heat is being transferred if you see a temperature change. For example, if I have, if I have an object that's getting colder, or if I have an object that's getting hotter, thermal energy had to have moved. And if thermal energy is moving, that's called what? Heat. Heat. Yes. If thermal energy is moving, it's called heat. But thermal energy won't move unless you have two different situations, like a hot region and a cold region. OK? Are you serious? Wow. <laughs> Yeah. How about a roll today in the last couple of weeks? I was gonna, I was gonna show you this. <laughs> Why didn't tell me? I, I mean, it's kind of embarrassing, but not really. <laughs> I was like, okay, they're laughing for a reason. What could potentially be the problem? And I was like, well, well, what they were laughing at yesterday was my fly was down. All right, was that a different class? That was a different class. Oh yeah, and I had my fly down yesterday. <laughs> Yeah, it was an eight period. That's why I was like, that's Asia laughing? I don't remember. I don't remember. Now. Sorry guys, you're feeling the heat? Yeah. <laughs> well, that's a wrong interpretation of the word heat. I'm sorry. Because in order for you to feel heat, you gotta have thermal energy being transferred to your face. I'm sorry. That was like fiction fire. <laughs> and my hairline. <laughs> Sorry guys, I didn't mean to expose you to an open fly. <laughs> what? <laughs> 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 fly guy. <laughs> What's the matter, Grammy? <laughs> <laughs> 
was the end? Minnesota. <laughs> I fixed the problem. We're good now. I don't think it's the problem. You see the hole in my pants? Front and back, I guess. <laughs> Some people just don't have a sense of humor. Alright. Here we go. Heating and cooling occurs through one of the three processes. We're going to talk about all three of these processes. You've probably heard of the first process, conduction. You probably have heard of the third process, radi radiation. You probably have not heard of the second process. Okay, but you maybe have. I don't I'm not saying you have it, but it's probably the one that's uh, the least familiar. How's outside look, Shane? Okay. Yeah, I, I understand why you wouldn't want to look at me. Yeah. Uh, okay. All right. Uh, the coffee's hot, right? 
and over time, the cup eventually becomes ha. And over time, your hand eventually becomes ha. That's because energy, thermal energy, from the hot cup of coffee is being transferred to the cup via conduction, touching, okay? Heating up the cup, then the cup gets transfers some of its thermal energy to your hand via conduction until all three have reached thermal equilibrium. Okay? Hopefully you'll have taken your hand off the cup by then. You do not want your hand to be in thermal equilibrium with the cup, cup of coffee or the coffee inside the cup. Yes? So is it conduction when you burn your tongue on the train? Uh, well, energy does transfer to your tongue. Yes. Uh, I don't know if that. Yeah, yeah. It, it's transfer being conduction, but the burning process is would be a chemical reaction. Yes. So yes and no. That makes sense. Good. Now, will energy ever go from cold a cold object to a hot object? No. No. Never. Okay. So that's why when you say. Uh, you open the door in the, uh, oh, you open the door in the winter, you cannot say you're letting the cold inside. You're actually just letting the warm out. Mind blown? Okay. The cold doesn't come inside. The hot just goes outside, making the inside what? Colder. I kind of already talked about thermal equilibrium. It's when two objects that are touching were once at different temperatures, then the heat will transfer from the hot object to the cold object until both of those two objects are at the same temperature. is the main process which thermal energy gets transferred through what? <laughs> solids. Okay? Convection does not happen with solids. Okay? And conduction can happen with gases. Um, wait, wait. Did I say this? conduction can't happen with liquids? That's not true. It can't happen with liquids. But if the uh, primary and uh, only likely one to happen with solids, for example, uh, convection won't work with solids, and we'll talk about why it only works with fluids. And we know fluids are what? Flow. Flow. And what are our two fluids? Liquids. Liquids and gases, right? Okay. Um, and radiation, we'll talk about its uses when we get to that. But for right now, we are specifically talking about conduction. Conduction is where two materials touch. Can liquids touch? Yeah. Can gases touch? Yeah. yeah. Okay. But um, <laughs> solids, this is really the only way that solids are going to transmit or transfer energy effectively. Okay. You're going to need to remember that, though. There could be, potentially be a question on your test that says conduction is the easiest way to transfer thermal energy through what phase? Um, do I need to explain thermal equilibrium anymore? I feel like we're getting to the point where we understand equilibrium well. It just means equal, right? So thermal equilibrium is when the thermal energy of two objects are equal, which means their temperature is the same. same. Okay. Once their temperature is the same, or they have the same amount of thermal energy, will, will heat flow anymore? 
No. Because do we have a hot and a cold object? No, we have a equal object and an equal object. I don't even know how to say that. A hot object and another hot object at the same temperature. Okay. <laughs> So some things conduct energy better than others. Uh, thankfully, this is the case. Otherwise, when you guys cook your food on a stove, you'd burn your hand. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Yeah. So how do the people who make the pans that you heat stuff up with on the stove what what make what do they do to make it so that you don't burn your hand when you touch the pot? You want to say that a little louder? Or you didn't say that much louder. <laughs> Did you guys hear that over there? No. We had all things that don't connect electricity. Or you need thermal energy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So. Usually, a pot that you put on a stove, the main portion of the pot is a very good conductive material, and you'd want the pot to be conductive. Why? To cook your food. You want to be able to transfer the energy from your flame or the stove or whatever you have on your stove to be transferred through your pot to your food quickly, right? Yeah. That would be the goal. I, you know, you're, you wouldn't want to use a bad material to cook your food, it would take forever. However, you do not want that energy to go all the way through the pot, into the handle, and to your hand. So, the handles on the pots are made of a different material that do not conduct heat very well, or thermal energy very well. So, however, if you kept a pot on a stove for like seven hours, eventually that, that handle might start to warm up a little bit. Okay. That makes sense, everyone? Yeah. Um, believe it or not, diamond is the best natural thermal conductor that we know of. Okay, I'm sure they've made some man-made ones that conduct better than diamond, but the, the, the uh, best natural conductor is actually made of diamond. Convection. Second type. Thermal energy is carried from one location to another. How? 
by a fluid. Okay? This is actually really unique how this works. Okay? Uh, have you ever heard of the saying hot air rises? Yes. Okay? Well then would it make sense that cold air falls? Yes. Okay? Does anybody know why hot air rises? Air is hotter than hotter. Hotter, yeah. Okay, great. The reason why it rises, the reason why hot air rises is because it's hotter, okay? Yes. Hotter but what's the what's the colder the bottom, so it must go to the top. Okay, good idea. Good guess. Okay. The particles are moving faster, absolutely, which causes them to occupy more volume which means they are less dense, okay? Things that are less dense rise, things that are more dense fall, right? If a rock is more dense than the water, what will it do in the water? It will fall, right? We talked about buoyancy last chapter, okay? So what happens here, this is a beaker of water, okay? I started heating it up. Now obviously via conduction, the water molecules right in here will be the ones that start to heat up, right? As they heat up, they become less dense, which means that water that's right here will start to what? Rise, okay? As it rises, the colder water up here will start to fall, okay? Well, as this hot water comes up here, it's gonna start giving off some of its energy and starting to cool down as the water that comes down here is gonna start coming in contact with this starting to heat up. So what you see is a current. Okay? Yes? Is that why water bubbles when it boils? No, the reason why water bubbles when it boils is because it's turning from a liquid to a gas, so it has to expand. Those bubbles are air pockets, or gas pockets, if you will. Okay? Yep. So when I say convection, it's this idea that fluids, one, can flow. The reason why solids can't do convection is because they simply can't what? Flow. Okay? So one, it has to flow, and then it uses the property that things when they're hotter are less dense, and things that are cooler are more dense. So you heat up, it starts to rise, the colder stuff starts to fall, and then it heats up and it starts to rise, and the colder stuff starts to fall, and you get this current. Okay? Um, convectional current, there is natural current. Okay, actually, believe it or not, uh, natural current is how mirages work. How you can see something that's not there. That's not the only reason, but. Uh, uh, cur uh, air will start to bend when it gets close to the surface of the ground because it's hotter there, hitting your eye, and your brain can only interpret things in straight lines, light in straight lines, so it makes an object there that it doesn't actually, isn't, that actually isn't there. When you take physics and we talk about light and how light works, you'll, that will make much more sense. But, yeah. Ever wondered why you can see the light even though you can't see the sun? early in the morning or late at night? Because <laughs> light can bend, but our brains can't comprehend that. Is that why we look at the roads and have to look at that? Yep, that's a mirage. It's a mirage of the sky. It looks what? When you're looking out on a highway that's straight, it looks like the road's wet. What you are seeing is a mirage of the sky. Because light comes off from the sky, gets close to the surface of the ground, it's warmer there, it will heat up and bend to your eye, your eye sees it and goes, I see the sky, but it's coming from the ground. I was always one. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I, I understand. I thought the same thing. But yes, it is a mirage.
talked about all the energy forms. One of the forms of energy was radiant energy. Do you remember that? Okay. Another, yeah, another way of thinking about it is light energy. And we talked about how light energy came from electromagnetic energy, and that was really kind of complicated. What's interesting is, is this is the energy that comes from the sun. Okay, so we get energy, thermal energy gets transferred from the sun to the earth via radiation. So at the surface of the sun, it's one form of energy, it gets converted to electromagnetic energy, allows it to propel through space, okay, into our atmosphere, hit our bodies, and convert back into thermal energy when it hits our bodies. That's why we heat up, okay, or get warmer, okay? And why do you think conduction isn't the best way to get from the sun to us? It's not a hard question, guys. Because what has to be true about conduction? They have to be what? Touching. touching. Yes, and the sun and us have not touched any time in the past couple of years. Forever. Okay. Or, or ever will. Okay, why are you guys picking stuff? Putting stuff away. I'm not done. In fact, we might have two more slides left. Don't give one. This is one. Swerve! What did you just say? Oh, a little detour. No. Get it in. Get it in. Okay, this is what I just said. Radiant energy cannot transfer. Thermal energy between two objects. Or conduction cannot transfer thermal energy if they're not touching. So radiant energy is great because if they're really far away, you've got to be able to get the energy from the sun to us, thankfully, God created electromagnetic or radiant energy. Yes, sir. Can I leave? Why? The picture of it. <laughs> I'm going to write this. You to write this in later. I will. I'll make sure. All right. All right. All right. You may leave. Once you get this in, you may leave. Okay. Uh, storm chain. Okay. We need to keep it. Why are you asking help? What? Sorry. <laughs> 